Today, as I said, is Good Shepherd Sunday, and it's one of the most uh, most beloved of imageries that that we hold about Jesus being the Good Shepherd. And I know one of my favorite picturizations of Jesus is the little lamb that Jesus holds, obviously maybe in reference to the one that was lost and, and is brought back and Jesus is having the lamb on the shoulder. And th those picturizations are always very beautiful. It's, uh, you know, the, um, obviously the Lord and then there's this cute little lamb that's, that looks like it's, it's been put in the washing machine and has had a good, a good wash and is so clean. But the reality is, the sheep is filthy. I've, uh, when we were in the seminary, we were, during our one year of novitiate, we had an opportunity to take care of goats. And they're, they're similar in different ways. But there was a herd of goats, and, and so a lot of them. And uh, one, we never gave them a bath. I can't remember even, even once giving any of them a bath. They, they were filthy all the time. And honestly, they were the most boring things to take care of. They, we had to go to take them for grazing. And for hours and hours, you sit with those, those things. And they, all that they are bothered about is themselves. They sit and nibble here, nibble there, nibble here, nibble there. And, and, and they just do their own thing. I don't think even once they even turn and look at, uh, they turn and look at the shepherd, the one who is taking care of them. The only time I remember that the sheep or the goat that I was taking care of started looking at me was when me, because I was scared of the snakes, I would take them to this place where there was no grass at all. And I'd keep them there and they'd look down to find something to nibble and there was only sand and then they'd look at me and they'd look down again. I think that was the only time they ever looked at me when they saw that they didn't have their own food to nourish themselves. And here now Jesus starts presenting himself as the good shepherd. Now that's not, that's not a strange imagery for, for the people of Israel or even for the ancient times. It's always been used. It's also been used in connection to, um, to the ruler or the king was even called a shepherd. Even in Egypt, the, the king would call himself, the pharaoh would call himself as the great shepherd and they'd add adjectives to it. Just as here, it's the good shepherd. We read, it's also there in the Israelite tradition, but it was always connected to something that was, that was of authority, of power. In Isaiah 40, verse 10, and 11 we read, See the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him, and his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. They're speaking about God as ruler. And then they say, he will feed the flock like a shepherd. But it's always in connection to him being a ruler. One in authority in Psalm 80, verse 1. In Psalm 80, Verse 1, give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim. Again, it's a ruler. And this is why when Jesus here presents himself and says that he's the good shepherd, the scripture actually tells us the disciples find this, find this strange in John chapter 10, verse 6. Jesus uses, used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying. Why? Because what Jesus was explaining or, or describing himself to be as a shepherd wasn't the, the traditional concept of being a shepherd as a ruler, as one in power, authority. But Jesus, what he speaks about is more of a relationship. Look at what Jesus actually starts saying. In John 10, it starts from verse 1 onwards till in verse 10. But Jesus says, The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. Immediately, there's a tone of, of a relationship that's building up. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. He's calling them by name and leading them out. I remember going to, uh, taking my sister and niece to 
um where was that what what island is it uh churchill island in your uh, near philip island they have that little place where they have the sheep sharing and and so they have they have a few sheep that's there and they have the horses they kind of rebuild the whole uh the whole concept of the old australia and so they have the sheep and they have the sheep sharing and and so you you can see all the sheep over there and there was this lady who had her a sheep dog who who kind of rounds the the sheep and brings them in and uh, tries giving us uh, giving us an idea of what it was at those times and there was one particular sheep that she kept speaking about called called that sheep by name and and it had it had a lot of uh, it had a lot of wool on it and uh, and so it would she would call it by name the sheep would come but that's the only sheep she called by name all the others were just the sheep and she'd say okay and there's a set of sheep there and that's a set of sheep there and, but this one and and the only one she seemed to be interested in or seemed to have given a name to was that one sheep now when jesus and, and and that is that is how it was even in the ancient times they've had so many sheep you're not going to remember first of all all look the same and you're not going to remember each sheep by name but jesus gives this very very different description of a shepherd and the sheep when he says i call out my sheep i know them by name i take their name and i call them out so this is this is a relationship that jesus is speaking about and that is why it was strange to the apostles they haven't heard of a shepherd in a relationship with the flock a shepherd takes care of the flock is true a shepherd as a ruler might lord it lord it over the flock is true but a shepherd having a relationship with the flock that is not something they were used to when when i was with the when i was with the goats when we were in the novitiate it was so boring i don't think i shared a relationship with any of them well the reality is for most of our feasts uh, one would go less you know so uh, they'd be our meal and in in all that jesus says he says i am the meal i am the banquet i offer my life for the sheep but there was no relationship for me with the with the goat it was they were there today i was um, rather at times we'd sleep through it we were so bored just just taking care of them that we just sleep through it it was there was no relationship but i remember when i had gone for a mission exposure as brothers we had gone for a mission exposure to the rural parts of um certain parts of india and we had to stay with people who owned sheep and they were of very very poor families but they they had their little house which which was basically just one room and in that one room they were they were shepherds they had sheep at night they bring the sheep inside the house so after they take them for grazing once it's night fall they bring them into the house and the sheep actually stay in the house with the people it stinks but only for us not for the shepherds they were perfectly fine with it day and night the sheep were with them jesus is speaking about this beautiful imagery of of a relationship that he's sharing with his flock and that was special that the shepherd says i share a relationship and this has to be understood because jesus is obviously giving a reference to ezekiel chapter 34 where it speaks about the false shepherds and if you have not read ezekiel 34 you should read it's uh, I, i can't read the whole thing but it's beautiful it speaks about israel's false shepherds and he says in ezekiel 34 was for you have not strengthened the weak you have not healed the sick you have not bound up the injured you have not brought back the strayed you have not sought the lost but with force and harshness you have ruled over them and you still call yourself a shepherd but you are a false shepherd and then god speaks about who the true shepherd is in ezekiel 34 verse verse 11 onwards he says god the true shepherd 
And it goes on. I will, I will bring back my scattered sheep. I will rescue them. I will gather them out from the peoples and I will gather them to the countries. I will feed them with good pasture. I will seek the lost and I will bring back the strayed and I will bind up the injured and I will strengthen the weak. It's this beautiful, this beautiful image of God being the true shepherd. And so Jesus is making in some way a reference to Ezekiel 34, speaking about the difference in the kind of shepherd that, that, the, that Israel's shepherds were, Israel's rulers were, and the shepherd that he is. But there's one difference. In Ezekiel 34, even when it is described God as the true shepherd, and all is described that I will seek the lost and I will bring back the strayed. I will take them to new pastures. And as we have in, in uh, Psalm, third, Psalm 23 as well, he will lead me through new pastures. All that is beautiful. But there's one thing that's different. That Jesus says in comparison to every other description of a shepherd in the Old Testament or the understanding they had in the Old as well. When Jesus says, I lay down my life for my sheep. I lay down my life for my sheep. I give myself. And that is where we start understanding in this relationship between the shepherd and the flock that Jesus is describing, we actually have one active partner and one very passive one. We, the flock, are passive. And our passiveness in a relationship is actually in stark contrast to Jesus' activeness in a relationship. Because in a relationship, it is all about not what you receive, it's about what you give. Relationships are always about what you give. And here Jesus is saying, I give of myself. Everything is about my sheep. Well, when it is, when it is with the sheep, you actually look at sheep, they're pretty, they're pretty obsessed with themselves, so feeding themselves, they, they nibble at, at everything. They're not bothered about anyone else. Even if you have another sheep coming at the side, it'll be a little battle to see what they can nibble more at. It's more about themselves and it's a perfect description of who you and I are. We're so, we're so obsessed with ourselves. We go through life doing our own things, straying in our own, on our own paths that we want, enjoying our own selves, feeding our own bodies, doing everything in which we have nothing to give to the shepherd. We end up being very passive in this relationship between the shepherd and the sheep. But in spite of our, our passiveness in this relationship, at every moment, there is a God up above who calls us by name, knowing his sheep by name and saying, I share a relationship with you. Irrespective of how much you have strayed, irrespective of if you are obsessed with yourself and you can see nothing else but yourself, the Lord says, in this relationship, I see you. And on this, on this day when we celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday and we pray about, about this, let us remember that Jesus is offering himself in a relationship. And how much have we responded to the relationship that God has for us? He is he's active in this relationship. Are we getting anywhere close to being active in the relationship when we can respond to what God what the Lord offers to us in this relationship. How, how far am I from this, this relationship with God, with the shepherd? How dead am I in this relationship with the shepherd? How blind am I in this relationship with the shepherd? How self-obsessed am I in this relationship with the shepherd that I have nothing to respond to? I have no response to the shepherd. Rather, I see only myself. And this is where John chapter 10 makes, makes things so different, where Jesus says, I share that relationship with you. Ultimately, he would do it on the cross. When he offered himself 
the promise he made in John chapter 10 saying, I lay my life down for my sheep. He completed it on the cross and he said, this is the shepherd you have. So what has my response been? How have I responded in this relationship between shepherd and sheep? It's a good time for us to reflect, ask ourselves, knowing that even as we go through through the virus and we go through the situations of COVID-19, the, the impacts of it, the economic, economical in, impacts of it, the, um, maybe the tragedies within our own families and all that we are going through in the midst of all this, in the midst of all this, to be able to, uh, to remember, we still have a shepherd who says, I will watch over my sheep. I know you by name, each one, I know you by name, and I will watch over my sheep. But in the midst of all of what we are going through, how much have we responded to the love of the shepherd? How much have we stopped a while from nibbling for our own selves, feeding our own selves to stop a while and look at the shepherd and understand a beautiful relationship he shares with us? A relationship in which he didn't think twice in giving his life for the sheep. Let's close eyes for a moment. Where are we in this relationship? Are we still like the flock that can only think about itself? We cannot think about others. We cannot think about the Lord. Am I so obsessed with myself that apart from feeding myself, there's nothing else I have thought about? Feeding my ego, feeding my desires, feeding my pleasure, my comforts. Lord, for the times when I have forgotten I have a shepherd who laid his life down for me. For the times when I forgot that there's a shepherd who is watching over me. For the times when I forgot that this was a relationship in which I ended up being passive. Lord, I ask pardon that I didn't actively respond in this relationship of love. Open my eyes and open my heart that I might look at my shepherd and might love my shepherd as much as he loves me. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.